hello and welcome to my channel say hi to a happy day in this channel i would like to share tales and stories i personally picked and or my kids is a favorite stories let's enjoy listening while i read to you the story of rona and the moon on the northern shore of North Island by a stretch of Silver Beach lived a Maori woman named Rona. She lived with her husband and two sons and what a happy life they led. Every day Rana's husband and the other warriors took their canoes out fishing while their young sons swam with the dolphins. Every evening, Rona made sure the cooking stones were just hot enough to make a delicious meal of the fresh fish her husband would bring home. Everything would have been perfect, but for one thing, Rona had such a bad temper. For no reason at all, she could fly off the handle. But her husband and children loved her all the same. One summer's night, the moon was full and so bright that the fish rose to the surface of the sea their silver scales flashing. This is the perfect night for fishing, said Rana's husband. I will take the boys out with the warriors in the boat. We'll fish all night and all day tomorrow and be back the same time tomorrow night. We'll be starving so make sure the cooking stones are just right so that we can cook our catch immediately. Rona promised, thinking she would enjoy being alone for a while. She slept all night and didn't wake up until the sun was high. She meandered about all day collecting wood for the fire and heating the cooking stones. From time to time, she dashed water on the stones. Nothing made her husband angrier than stones so hot they burned the fish. The sun deeped golden into the sea. The rising moon mixed silver with gold. Dazzled, Rana fell into a dream. Heave ho! Home we go. The voices of father and sons rang through the night as their paddles got into the water. Rana woke with a start. How long had she been asleep? Now there was no golden sunlight, just a dark sea and a silver moon. She rushed over to her fire. It was burning brightly. But, oh no, the cooking stones were blazing hot. She hadn't cooled them for hours, and both water cords were empty. Heave ho! The voices were near, hungry and eager to get some home for that delicious fish dinner. Panic striking, Rona grabbed the gourds and ran toward the spring. It was a rocky path and uphill all the way. She scrambled and tumbled, but reached the spring and filled her gourds to the brim. 
heaving one on each hip, she set off back down the path. At the deep, steepest point, the moon disappeared behind the cloud, plunging Rona into darkness. She tripped and fell. Her gourd smashed. The water sloshed out, bashed and bruised. Rona scrambled to her feet. Mockingly, out came the moon again. You belittering idiot, you useless piece of rock in the sky. Look what you made me do by hiding your light. She screamed her insults. Pokakua, coked head. The moon was usually a calm sort of body, drifting above the petty affairs of life. But Rona's insults were too much. It spun down out of the sky, and before she could say Pakakua one more time, swept her upward. Oh, no, you don't, shrieked Rona, grabbing the branches of a tree and hanging on for dear life. Oh, yes, I do, boomed the moon, and with one more mighty tug, yanked Rona into the heavens. When father and sons returned, they found a blazing fire and stones too hot for cooking. But where was Rona? They searched from sunrise to sunset, shouting her name. Darkness fell. They collapsed exhausted on the ground and stared up at the starry sky. The moon looked at the moon, they cried. On a glistening orb was the shape of a woman clasping two gourds, one under each arm. Rona was must have cursed once too often. Now she was doomed to float through the skies forever and ever. Kia mahari kite orana say the Maoris. Remember what happened to Rona. The end. I hope you enjoy listening to the story of Rona and the Moon. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to listen to more of our favorite stories. See you soon!